A couple years ago, we put together a video showing how you can create an interactive slider in Figma. The tool has grown a lot in just two years. So I wanted to take the time to revisit that video showing how you can use components to create an interactive slider that can be reused across any of your app designs. So let's get started. Over the years, Figma has made major improvements to interactive components. So we'll spend a majority of our time creating a component set from a simple slider like this to more complex sliders that have discrete stopping points. We'll also look at how you can take a component and drop it into an app-like experience. So these are all instances of the same component. You've created this component once and you've assigned this interaction once. So you're not having to assign these sort of slide interactions from scratch every time you place a component into this instance here. And lastly, we'll take an instance of a component and break it apart from that main interaction that you've assigned and start to assign an interaction that makes it feel like this slider is really interacting here with the app. So let's get started. So to start, we'll first create the frame that this will all live in. I just hit F to pull up my frame presets. I'm going to choose iPhone mini and we just rename this to phone. I'll create another frame that's going to live inside of this larger phone frame. I'll just fill it here and maybe give it a 10% opacity. Uh, I also like to round off the corners here and this is going to be the, the track for this, um, this slider here. And I don't know, I've gotten into the habit of using frames as my basic elements. I almost never use a rectangle or even an ellipse. Uh, I think I like the that they're flexible down the road in case these things have to change or hold something later on. So I've created that. I've called a track command D to create another element that I'll call fill. And I've already used this uh, color in my file here, uh, this blurple. So I'm just going to choose that one. And I'll leave that as the full width. And then the last thing we'll have to make is the handle itself. Again, I'll make that a frame itself. 24 pixel handle. Um, actually, I'll fill that real quick with just some sort of opaque uh, light gray. And so, yeah, this is what I like to do. I just make a frame and then I round it and do things like that. I want these all to be uh, named initially as I create them. And then I want them to all be aligned. So. You can select them all, you can center align them, you can left align them. Now, here it is. This is our base components for, for everything that we'll do. It all starts here with just these three elements. Next, you'll simply highlight all of this and command option K to create a component. So I'll rename that just slider, just a simple slider. What I'm gonna do is hold option and shift and drag that out. So now I have an instance of that main component there, but what I wanna do is break it apart from the main component. So that's command option B and simply like recomponentize it. So now we have two components named the same thing, which is actually what we want. But we can click into this one here and align this handle to the far right. So these are effectively our two sort of resting states. The last thing we'll have to do is take this fill and revisit this. So I left it that full width, but simply go back here and type 0.001 and that will drop to a zero pixel wide element. So the element exists there. You just can't see it. And that's kind of what will give that effect of that line growing. For whatever reason, you can't just type a zero, so you have to type a 0 0.001 to achieve that. Two main components that are called the same thing, you simply highlight both of them and you'll get a prompt here to combine as a variant. Now I'll apply a quick auto layout so that I can just keep this file clean. And here we go. These are our two states, so from zero to one. And because we don't have any other version of this, we don't have that two step, three step, or four step yet, we can actually just add one property here that'll help us um, give these some, some meaning. So we'll go from, uh, we'll call this position. So to me, this is saying, uh, what position does the handle uh, exist at? And we'll click into this top one here, and I'll just say that's a zero, and it goes from a zero to a 100. I'm kind of using like percentages sort of loosely in my head to, to give this some meaning. And lastly, we'll add an interaction. So actually command and click into that handle, click the prototyping tab over here and drag an arrow down to this element. Uh, we'll, we'll change it from the default to on drag and we'll say that there is a smart animate. And I haven't found that there's like a really best time here. They all kind of work because they're sort of dragged by hand. And then we'll do the inverse. We'll say from this handle, go back to here when it's dragged the opposite direction. So we'll have to assign that on drag interaction again, but it'll keep that smart animate. So here we have it, our main component that we'll use to create all the other variants. I'm going to drag that out and give it a background fill so we can see what's going on there. And I'll grab this top one and hold option and drag it into our phone frame here. So from here, we can click onto the frame and hit the play button up here, or we can go to the prototyping tab and give it a starting point. 
So from there, we can actually click the play button here. So there we see it works. It goes from zero to 100. And you can kind of flick it, or you can pull it and drag it all the way or pull it back. Now it will snap to one direction or the other once it reaches a certain point. And what I noticed here that I didn't notice in my previous, so you see how I had it, that fill is going down to a zero pixel frame there. So it adds some odd animation there. And so a quick way we can fix that is actually go back to our component here and identify the fill there. So we know that we made that a zero pixel wide. You can actually add, you know, 10 or 20 or whatever you want there. So now it actually lives behind the handle. And if we revisit this, we'll probably see that animation go away. So there, it just took a moment to refresh, but now you see that it has a nice clean transition to the end there. You don't have that purple line squishing. Creating the remainder of these components is actually pretty simple. From here, we simply duplicate a number of these ones that we've already made, and we start to adjust some of the elements that live inside there. So I'll grab both of those. I hit Command D. And right now it actually is trying to assign different properties here. I'm gonna ignore that now and hit escape and just hit right tab. And that's gonna shove all of these to the bottom because I've made this an auto layout frame. So I've duplicated this, but I want a 50% state where you've dragged the handle halfway. So I'll duplicate this one more time. So now we have the three elements that we need to create that. What you can easily do is simply take this and say center this handle in this very center of this larger frame. Next, we'll adjust the fill length. An easy way to do that is grab that element and simply drag it out to halfway. But a more precise way to do it is, um, this is cool in Figma, uh, you can take that 295 value, we know that's the full width of this, and divide that by two. So you can simply do the math right here inside this uh, text input. I'm gonna round that up to 148, to be a nice round number. So that's a more precise way to get that value. And here we go, we have our 0, 50, and our 100 state. Now that we've introduced more variants, we need to go in and start assigning properties so that we understand how each of these elements relates to each other. So I'll click here in the top of the frame. The very first property we made was just position. Where does the handle live? And we just have a zero to 100. Now I'll introduce a new property. I'm just going to call it steps. So the way I'm thinking about this is that this is a single step, a one step slider. It has one stopping point. This would be a two step slider because it has two stopping points. So the way that we can start to assign those properties is I'm clicking all three of these, going to steps and saying this is a two. And I'll click these first ones here. And I'll say that's a one step. Next, I'll go over to the newly created components and start to assign more accurate positioning of those handles. So here I know that that handle's at zero. This one's at the 100 mark. And so there's no 50. And when I duplicated these, it kind of assumed new information here. So it pre-assigns these kinds of things. So I'm gonna override that with the 50%. And then once I've done that, I can actually go here back to this main frame and I can move these around and start to organize this to make more sense for me. I want steps to come first and I can hit this uh, settings icon here and actually drag 100 down. So as I'm using these components, the way that they're set up makes more sense. Finally, we'll go to the prototype tab to reassign some of these interactions. These interactions have been retained because we duplicated them from above, but we need to simply reassign where they're actually ending up. So that one's easy. We can click into here. These both go to the center. Now this one is the one that's unique. Um, this drag handle is currently going to this one, but you can add another on drag interaction and that can return to the top there. A way we can test if this has worked, we take this and duplicate it. We'll reassign this to be the two-step slider. We'll go back to our presentation. So that's loaded in there. So here I should be able to slide that all the way to 100. And here there's a stopping point halfway through. So it kind of locks into place there and you can pull it further or bring it back. So those are the basics. Now you have everything you need to create the three-step and the four-step slider. So what I've done is I've created the three and the four-step sliders. I've assigned the appropriate positioning for the handles and I've assigned the appropriate step count. Now I have to go in and assign the interactions. Now these are all clicked up. I already dragged over the correct variants here and assigned the correct step count to them. So we can go test that now. And I'll point out something here that I did to make these components swappable as best as I could. Here in the three step slider, um, I actually assigned this value as the 25% positioning and this value as the 75% positioning. The reason I didn't choose a 33 or a 66 is because it would add to this list here 
and I kind of want to cut down on the number of positions there, and it's a pretty close approximation if you wanted to do like the four step slider, something like that. With all of our components now created, we can move on to show how you can take an instance of one of these main components and customize it to fit in a number of different situations. First, I'll start by showing that this fill color we made that purple, that blurple color that I like. If I take this phone's background and I change the fill to that same purple, suddenly you lose the ability to see how that slider has progressed. We can customize this in a really quick way. If you simply drag over all of the components you have there, if you go down to the, your selection colors, this purple is actually showing that it's selected all of the fills in those sliders. So if I click into this and drag this up to the white, suddenly you'll see that that fill color has now become white. That's just one of the many ways that you can leave an instance attached to its main component, but still customize it. Next, we can mock up a quick app that uses one of our slider components. So I'll just clear everything out of here. And I'll bring this fill back to white. I'm gonna drop a frame in here and bring that to its full width. I use a plugin called Content Reel, which is great for images and uh, pre-populating some text and things like that. So if we just want to choose an image of one of these people, we can drop that in there really quickly. If you're working with local components, you can easily take one of these and hold Option and drag it over to your file. Otherwise, you can go to your Assets tab, and within your local components, you should find the slider that you've just created. And there, you can just simply drag it out to the frame you want to place it in. From here, we can kind of customize this a bit. I've just created an auto layout frame here that has a title and it's using the single step slider. We can click into this and hold option to drag this down. And what I'll do to make it a little quicker is I'll highlight both of these and hit shift A. Now this is wrapped in an auto layout frame. From there an easy way to duplicate this is to select this last one here and hit command D. And then you can do that as many times as you want. With that in place we can add one more interaction before we demo. So I'll click on this larger frame, I'll go to the prototyping tab and assign a vertical scroll. I'll click back into my auto layout frame here. I'm going to add a bit of padding here at the bottom just because I know it will need that when we jump to the next page. So I've said on vertical scroll all of this content can move so what I'll have to do is click into the image here and click fix position when scrolling. So now I'll click on the frame here and we'll demo that. Now if I come here I can scroll vertically here the image stays fixed there and every one of these sliders is that same 0 to 100 percent slider. To customize this further you can go back to your file, click into individual sliders, and assign them a different step count if you want. And then go back to your prototype. And lastly, I want to show how you can take a variant and remove the assigned interaction so we can begin to make it feel like this slider is interacting with this image. And I'll show you what I mean. If you click into the slider here, and you click into the handle, you see that there is a variant interaction assigned, and that's that drag interaction. Now because it's assigned at the variant level, all that's happening is that it's transitioning from this zero point placement to this 100% placement. But what we want to do is actually remove that interaction. When we do that, this slider no longer has any type of transition. Before variants, you would have to use multiple frames to show a transition, and that's kind of what we'll have to do here. So we'll take this handle here and actually redirect it over to this frame. Next, click into this component, assign it the 100% positioning, click back into that handle and remove that variant interaction, and make an on-drag interaction back to that previous frame. Now to show that this image has changed from this frame to this, we can click into this image, go to your fill settings, and change the exposure here. Now I'll go back and make a starting point here. Now let's demo this. And there we go. The slider here at the top now interacts with the image above, while all the other sliders maintain their interactions assigned to that component level. So there you go. Hopefully you understand how interactive components work, how they can be useful throughout your workflow, and how they might give you a sense of what interacting with an app could feel like. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this updated video helped. There's a link to the file in the description, so be sure to download that if you want to check that out. And like and subscribe for more content like this.